So the next thing I want to go over in Cinema 4D R16 is the content browser, which is full of uh, new ready-to-use objects and materials and presets and uh, so many things to uh, get your new project started and underway. Um, there are so many things to explore that it's, it's really hard to um, actually understand what everything does and, and all the, the great little... Uh, key items in there. So I'm just going to go over uh, a bunch of them with you. Uh, we're going to open up the content browser right now and just kind of go down the list and, and see what's cool and what's useful and how, how we can use it. So let's go ahead. All right. So I already have Cinema 4D uh, R16 open and um, I just, just opened up the content browser just by going to window uh, content browser. And uh, the first thing I want to go through is the uh, broadcast section of the content browser. So uh, if we jump right into it, uh, we can kind of just scroll down uh, like we could in past versions and see all of uh, the new objects in uh, the content browser. And I, I threw in some of these uh, gift boxes here uh, just to see kind of how they look. And um, right off the bat, you know, uh, we have uh, some great models here. Uh, if I render it out, you can kind of see um, y you can throw these into... Uh, to a scene as is, you can uh, change the textures of the wrapping paper. You see, uh, we have the folds and um, the bow already uh, created. So, great starting point. Even if you just want to map out a scene and um, use these as kind of placeholders, but again, uh, the models are uh, nice, uh, certainly nice enough to uh, throw into a scene and uh, and use right away. And then, um, if I go ahead and hide that, I I also brought in these kitchen utensils as well. If we continue down, you'll see them uh, here under the cutlery um, and the dinnerware. And, uh, you know, this is a great, um, great uh, set to have, especially for uh, motion designers, um, depending on what kind of job you're doing. And uh, let's go ahead and move into, we have some of these uh, infographics here, and um, we have uh, data input, so these are all um, customizable and animatable. So, and it actually says it right there for you. So for the graph uh, and pie chart, if we open this up, uh, all these values here, uh, you can see, uh, can be changed. Which again, it's a great starting point. It's already rigged up for you. Um, you know, so if you're trying to uh, just create an animatic or uh, an actual final animation, you can kind of go through and, and use some of these setups here. This, uh, this graphic is on a slider. The pie chart, again, all the values here are, um, are fully animatable. So again, just by uh, going into uh, the content browser here and finding them, you may not know that, uh, you know, uh, just by looking at it, that uh, it's customizable and it has user data for you. Um, some of them do say animatable or uh, module, which uh, should give you the idea that you can uh, customize it. But again, just by opening up the content browser, if you don't really have the time to explore it, I want to just get these in front of you, uh, especially for uh, broadcasts and motion designers. So... Uh, let's move on. There's this awesome studio light, and I'm constantly finding myself, um, you know, using uh, studio setups and lighting and behind the scenes kind of uh, style frames and uh, animations. So, this is actually a really nice model of a spotlight here. And you'll see that um, in the attributes, we can uh, open up the gate here either vertically and or horizontally the light itself has a really nice texture material um, and geometry on it as well so that is a, a great object and, and awesome to have built right into the content browser the sports package always gets uh, some attention uh, during every version uh, and update to cinema 4d which is excellent because Again, the, the broadcast and motion designers uh, heavily use this kind of stuff. Um, this basketball uh, net here is uh, is pretty amazing. Um, it's like NBA quality 
Uh, and just by looking at it here in the content browser, if you go into sports items, uh, I mean, I actually thought it was just a, a basketball rim and um, a backboard, but when I opened it up, it was a fully uh, actually customized, like you could, you can actually move this thing. Um, it's all rigged up. Um, if you're doing any kind of sports promos or, or things like that, um, that is an awesome item to have. And uh, I threw a couple other items in here. Uh, the football helmet, I think we've had this in previous versions, but um, it's got the new uh, reflectance material on it. And that is an awesome item to have as well because that's not an easy object to animate. Um, I think the ice skate is uh, new to 16. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but again, this is uh, this is another really great model to have if I can find it here in my scene. There it is. That's like a really nice detailed model. And you can see that the content browser is beginning to take on more of a complex library of objects here. So, um, you know, as, as designers and animators, we're not necessarily forced to go and uh, buy these objects separately. They're, they're built uh, right into the programs that we're using, which is great. And um, if I hide this, uh, another object that I actually really like is a skateboard. Again, another object that can be uh, tedious and, and a little bit difficult to make, especially when you get into the, the details in the, the trucks here and everything like that. So, um, you know, you can just change out the deck and, and the tape as well. If you want to customize it yourself, um, it's a great starting point. All right, street objects. Um, in the content browser, if you continue in the broadcast section, I grabbed a, a wheel and a fire hydrant. Wheels are, are really uh, popular in the uh, motion graphics industry, so uh, being able to have a couple of different options there is, uh, is excellent. And then this fire hydrant I thought was pretty cool. Um, you know, nice detail all the way down to the chains and uh, nuts and bolts. And remember, you can, you know, strip these objects down and take what you need from them as well. Uh, they're not baked by any means. So if you uh, go inside of the objects, uh, you know, certainly explore your options there and, and see what else you can, you can find. In the presets, if we go down to, let me see here. Tools and helpers. Uh, we have a, a really nice variety here, actually, um, if you want to uh, kind of browse through. But if you double click on the magazine, this is a really uh, useful, I've personally had to use uh, third party plugins or build something like this from scratch. So uh, being able to have custom user data uh, built right into a module is really excellent. Um, we can customize uh, things like the width and the height of the book, the thickness of it, and then the segments and, uh, you know, and the width and the height as well. And then we can uh, go ahead and unfold this and you see the really nice um, animation built right into the slider here. As we're folding over, you're getting that, that nice flip, that secondary animation there. And then um, that's that's just really helpful. Completely customizable, as you can see here. All of these are um, all of these can have keyframes added to them. Um, that that's actually one of my favorite. Uh, new uh, presets in here, and it's uh, it's it could be easily missed, especially if you don't have the time to uh, search through here, um, and and you may not know that uh, it's fully customizable and um, and ready to animate. So uh, I'm happy to show that one to you too. And uh, the teaser titles here, uh, I'm gonna go. Let's see, up one here, and. Uh, under scenes and title sequences, I just double clicked and added this. Uh, it opens up a whole new uh, scene in Cinema 4D. And this is great if you're just starting into motion graphics or you're trying to set up um, uh, a scene here. Uh, this is, I can't even tell you how many times I've had to do something like this. 
uh, from scratch, obviously. And this is set up actually with dynamics and the camera uh, moving uh, through through the world. So again, if you want to just use this as a, a starting point and add in uh, you know planets and atmosphere and, and particles as you're flying past this, you can adjust the speed. Um, and everything like that, and, and obviously go ahead and um, update the name as well, like so, and then um, and we can adjust the kerning here as well too, which is perfect for um, the motion graphics or broadcast designer. And if we uh, continue down, uh, unfortunately I don't really have time to, there's just so much stuff, I don't have time to go over any of the sculpting uh, material here. Uh, if, if we jump into the studio section though, um, and into 3D objects, there's all these new, uh, module systems, uh, everywhere. Um, and in the studio, uh, version, if we, uh, if we go into the 3D objects, you're, you'll see doors and staircases and windows. And, um, if we double click, uh, let me see here, if we double click on the door, you're gonna see um, a fully customizable door, and I'm showing this to you again as um, you know, especially motion graphic designers and and broadcast designers um, setting up your scene. This is a great start, even uh, obviously you know architecture uh, design and things like that. So um, all the user data is down here, where you can adjust uh, things like the frame width and even. Um, which side the door opens and you can animate the door swinging open and and um, all of these objects are fully uh, customizable so if you don't like the the design of the handle you can uh, create your own and then drag and drop it uh, and replace it there um, and same thing with uh, the staircase and the windows you go ahead and drop a window in there too and uh, the same thing we can uh, we have so many different parameters to adjust. And uh, we have the vertical opening right and left, uh, and that's how we can open up the windows. And uh, again, fully animatable here as well. Adjust the height of the entire unit uh, as well as the width. So really interesting module systems here uh, throughout the entire content browser. Uh, really can't get enough of that kind of stuff. And now we're going to jump into uh, the visualize. Again, I'm going really fast. I know I'm skipping uh, uh, quite a lot of things here, but um, I just want to kind of touch on some of the key new features, um, and then you can explore on your own. So if we go into the 3D objects under visualize, and uh, we have this uh, section here called packaging, uh, which is really unique um, to Cinema 4D R16. If we double-click on the object, what that means is we can... Um, it has user data, so uh, everything is uh, completely customizable on sliders from the height, the width, um, the, the size of the uh, cover sides, which is really, really nice. You go ahead and fold that right over, and then everything just works uh, perfectly. Um, when they were designing these uh, these systems here, they really didn't miss uh, any any kind of details here. And if I go ahead and delete that, just something as simple as um, a cardboard box. But now it's it's just set up for us to just just go ahead and drop in our scene, you know, um, just keyframe it, and uh, go ahead and open up your box and start moving. Throw throw some items in there, and. Uh, you know, the list goes on. We have this uh, lotion tube, and uh, we can assign our own materials and uh, pack shots and everything to these as well. Um, and these are perfect items to animate in here and uh, go ahead and throw them in Cineware in After Effects. And if we have client changes or anything, we can come back into uh, Cinema 4D and just uh, go ahead and tweak the textures and... Um, you know, we, we have the really nice attention to detail, just hiding the cap, and, and you actually see uh, the detail underneath. Uh, we can adjust the global parameters here, and then even really fine details uh, throughout everything. 
YouTube radius. So anyways, uh, I think you get the, the picture on that kind of stuff, but uh, be sure to go through. Again, when I first opened this up, um, I, I'll admit I didn't really know that all of these things or a lot of these objects were uh, fully customizable like this. Um, I think, uh, you know, I got kind of thrown off just by looking at it. Um, and then, you know, once I, I, I dove into it, um, I, it was pleasantly surprised. And now I'm going to certainly use this... Um, you know, when, when the time comes. And of course we have, uh, you know, plenty of great materials in here, uh, just like we always do. Um, you know, uh, leather, you know, really, uh, nice, nice textures, uh, right out of the box to go ahead and use. Um, you can just kind of go down the list and especially with this new reflectance channel, all of these metals and, um, reflective materials are built using that new reflectance channel so you're certainly going to see um, some more detailed and uh, you know more complex materials uh, within this uh, content browser so uh, that's actually going to do it um, I can't even believe how fast we just went through that entire content browser I feel like we missed so many things uh, because there's this new content browser is just so jam-packed uh, with updated features um, and presets but um, you know I, I just wanted to get through it uh, show you some of the key new features uh, within the content browser in Cinema 4D R16 so that um, you know you can just uh, get an idea and you can jump in and, and start using these uh, presets and um, everything as well in your everyday workflow be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series where I go over the entirely new motion tracker never before seen in previous versions of Cinema 4D. I'm going to show you how I tracked in 3D objects to a scene that I shot on my iPhone. The all new Cineware 2.0 where I go over all the updated features including the default layer, automatic synchronization, the region of interest, collecting all of your files, the entirely revamped bevel deformer now non-destructive. I'm going to show you how to take a simple primitive in 3D and make something completely different. The updated cogwheel feature which has all new parameters where you can make your own custom gears and cogwheels. One of the biggest updates to R16 which is the reflectance channel. I'm going to show you how I build a custom reflective material from scratch and apply it to a watch that I modeled. Thank you and I'll see you then.